Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Grace Church Muskogee. I assume everybody here knows where they are, but in Cyberland, that's where, we're, that's where we are. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let us kneel and confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Truly sorry, we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be seated to hear the word. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Medan. He led the flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard the cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver from them, from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of Canaanites, the Hites, the Amorites, the Pitsis, Hives, the Bencher. The cry of the Israelites I 
has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians express them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you when you have brought brought people out of Egypt. You shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am as has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Sure. here with this. This doesn't go here. Okay. Now, Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. So will I bless you as long as I live. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness. When I remember you upon my bed, for you have been my helper, my soul clings to you. The second lesson is from Corinthians. Yeah, she is. I'm waiting for her to come up here. There she comes. Whoops. <laughs> All right, Jean. <laughs> I got carried away there. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters. <laughs> that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. It is written, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. 
God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> okay, so we're now in the church season of Lent. I mean, there's reminders of it everywhere, the songs we sing, the readings we hear. And it's a time for reflection, looking inward, and anticipating the most important of our church celebrations, Easter. And although Easter may not be the celebration that generates as much revenue and publicity as Christmas time, 
It is the foundational celebration for Christians. Well, I was thinking about the stories in the New Testament about the resurrection and how it was, it's central to our faith. And I remember a paper I read <clears throat> several years ago by um, Pastor Tim Brown. He's a Lutheran pastor, ELCA. And it was entitled, How Can I Trust That Jonah Is a Story, But the Resurrection Is Real? So he wrote that Jonah, the Jonah story is a myth, not a real event, and that the resurrection of Jesus is not a myth, but a real event. Now this can be a difficult concept, especially if you come from a tradition where the Bible was taken very literally. So when we look at the Bible stories, like the Garden of Eden, Cain and Abel, Noah and the Flood, the Tower of Babel, and of course Jonah, literally, we do ourselves a disservice. This is because the Bible contains different kinds of writings. It has histories, prose, poetry, legend, and myth. And Jonah is a myth. I mean, he's, he's really not the poster boy for um, someone who obeys God. But it is kind of an interesting myth. It's instructive. Its pattern is mythic. The characters, the narration, the plot, all of it is mythic. And it was not meant to be taken literally. It is to be learned, read, pondered over, and thought over. But not the way you'd ponder a math problem. Not the way you would ponder over how someone could be stuck in a whale for days and not be eaten by stomach acid. So we do the teachings of the Bible a disservice by holding the whole Bible as being one type of writing to be held to the same status. This puts us in a real binary dilemma, thinking something has to be true or false, fact or fiction. And this can keep us from discovering the deep riches found in scripture if we think that we can believe all of it or we can believe none of it. So on to the resurrection. Pastor Tim says that for Christians, the resurrection is central to the faith, whereas some of the other stories are not. If the Jonah story was missing from scripture, the Christian faith would largely go on, all systems normal. But without the resurrection, the salvation story would be lost. And we would end up being Saturday morning Christians. The Christ is crucified, time to hide out in the upper room because nothing is left. And it's also worth noting that at this time when this took place, a claim that someone rose from the dead was not only unthinkable, but would most likely initiate charges of blasphemy, and result in death or expulsion for the Jewish community of faith. If they were willing to take the risk talking this way, it is telling. So a story can be true without being fact. <clears throat> and it is intellectually honest to acknowledge that not all scripture is meant to be read in the same way. A healthy dose of mystery surrounding the central stories is also important, especially those written so as to be a history for the salvation story. After all, the resurrection is not a problem to be solved, it is a mystery to be pondered over, embraced, and loved. Amen. Oh, I have to put my shoes back on. I took them off so I was on holy ground. Okay, let us stand and <clears throat> recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. Once again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us kneel and pray. Our Father, give us our trespasses. Please be seated. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Collect of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended again from all adversaries. Which might adversities which might happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people. As we have offered gratitude for God's grace upon this community, let us now offer our gifts to the Lord, trusting that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be led to ever more faithful fellowship and service. We pray for peace from things that separate us from one another and for our salvation. We pray for the peace of the whole world and for the welfare of the holy churches of God, especially St. David's, Oklahoma City, St. Augustine of Canterbury, Montevideo, Uruguay, the Diocese of Central Pennsylvania, 
in the province de Iglesia de Anglican du Congo. For this holy gathering and for all those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, mercy. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Paulson, our bishop, Chris and Tom, our clergy, Alex and Pat, our wardens, vestry, delegates, all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the world and its leaders, our nation and its people. We pray for our leaders, especially Joe, our president, Kamala, our vice president, Mark Wayne, our congressman, James and Jim, our senators, Kevin, our governor, and Marlon, our mayor. Lord, have mercy. We pray for prisoners, for the oppressed, all those in need or suffering, especially Alyssa, Amy, Bill, Bill N., Cheryl R., Dennis C., Dennis C. Jr., Emma, James and Shirley, Jessica, John G., John and Sharon, Kenneth, Kenyon, Kim, Mike and Betty, Pat and Joe, Priscilla, Quinn and Nancy, the Rogers family, Rona, Ronnie, Sakina, Sarah, Troy, Eliso, Vitali, Natalia, Finley, who's impacted by those impacted by the war, especially in the Ukraine, and all emergency responders, United States military, and those whose suffering is known only to God. We pray for all those who have died, especially those in this horrible war. Lord, have mercy. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. We pray for those in our parish, especially John, Renee, my angel, Ched, Ron, and Laura. Lord, bless all those everywhere who give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage they may minister to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy for love of him who laid down his life for us. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace. The Lord be with you. Also with you.
It's say hi to everybody time. Oh, I like that. I like your heart. Thank you. Okay, just cool. announcements, birthdays, anniversary prayers. So announcements. Uh, just real quick. Um, next week, Van Odom is leading us in morning prayer, but after that, beginning April 3rd, we will have Father Chris in the house. Yay! And we will return to our traditional liturgy. Now, we do plan on a welcome dinner that Sunday. There will be a ham. Please plan on bringing sides and desserts to go with lunch. that. Right, lunch. Lunch. Not a dinner. Yes. Gotcha. Well, lunch. You're, it's Sunday you're, dinner. You're in the South. It's Sunday <laughs> well, dinner. You're right. That's okay. the noon meal After on service. Sunday, right? Dinner? It's dinner. Thank you. After service. <laughs> right after service. <laughs> now that we get past that. Um, I need my glasses. Uh, oh, yes. I am in charge of scheduling readers, ushers, and acolytes. I've got plenty of readers and have been having very many people volunteer. I need ushers and acolytes. But I don't see any youth here right now. However, you can be an adult acolyte. And yeah. For sure. We have some examples of those. But if you are willing and interested to usher, it's not difficult. Please let me know. That's about it. That's all I have. Okay. All right. Nice work, kid. Pam, do you have an uh, answer? No, no. Nope. All righty. Our, uh, our girls, Boy Scout Troop, uh, did a taco fundraiser, and they advertised across the world and they, they delivered this time. If you ordered on Wednesday by 5 o'clock, they delivered. And they made over $1,000 on Thursday. Whoa. And this is good. Yes, God bless our scouts. And they, and they work like dogs. They were all in the kitchen. They worked in there all the whole time in preparation and cleanup. And they did a great job. And then bless their hearts. After they worked all day on their feet in the kitchen and all the setup before and everything, then that evening, they went shopping, picked up all their food for camping, and on f yesterday, Friday, they went out. They're camping at Greenleaf, and will be okay. in later this afternoon. Uh, they are, their money will go to a summer trip to Philmont up in New Mexico, a 12-day camping trip where their, their tents and their clothing bags will be ferried from site to site, but they will carry everything else on their backs. And they cannot wait to go. Our boy troop and our girl troop are both going. Uh, this, some, this weekend we have uh, Azalea cleanup. And the scouts, they're actually camping this weekend, but they're going to try and help as they can. The kids are back in school, so it's a little bit complicated. But what I'm going to do is I'm, on the 24th and the 25th, and that's Thursday and Friday, I'm going to pick up the things, the, uh, all the vests and stuff at 10. I will meet you if you can come help. I'll meet you, park in Triad Eye Care Center there on 69, just north of the IHOP. Park in their parking lot, and we'll clean up that whole area there from IHOP to the corner. And then, the, then we'll start on the, we'll go across the street and start on that big green area that's there around the uh, Starbucks and on the corner of Shawnee and uh, 69. And so then the 25th, we'll finish that. Same thing. 11 o'clock, both days. Come if you can. And I will put this, also do an all call on this. And thank you for supporting our scouts. Okay. Um, today. None here. Okay. So everybody out there on their computers or, or phones. Oh. Birth. Yay! Oh! I'll do it today so I won't have to bless myself. <laughs> Good thinking. Okay. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Let us say together the general thanksgiving prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only in our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication for you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, we do have a uh, coffee hour with Pam, uh, Pat's cinnamon rolls, and please join us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>